Hello everyone, this is the educator Priyanka Dhaku teaching you life senses and welcome you all on our YouTube channel Gurmantra Shiksha Kagra. So today in this video, I'm going to teach you uh, about virus, bacteriophage and lysogenic and lytic cycle of a virus. Okay, so let's start with virus. Viruses, these are very, very simple and non-cellular entities. So you should remember that viruses are non-cellular or you would say these are acellular okay so they are either have a dna or they either have rna so here it is rna or they may have dna it's not uh, dna here but viruses uh, may have either dna or rna which is enclosed in a protein coat and they can reproduce within the uh, living cells they are actually obligate parasites so they are obligate intracellular parasites do not forget it they are obligate parasite but obligate intracellular parasites okay so size of the virus the virus's size uh, it varies it varies from 0 0.02 to 0 0.3 micron meter smallpox the name is indicating like it is the smallest virus okay but smallpox is the largest known virus okay and polio virus is the smallest known virus right right now fine uh a fully assembled infectious virus is called virion and the main function of virion is to deliver its dna or rna genome into the host cell so that the genome can be expressed by the host cell uh every viral species it have very limited host range that uh, it can reproduce in only a small group of closely related species so let's talk about viral structure so structure of virion uh different viruses different virions have different structures they have nucleocapsid nucleocapsid means they, they will have nucleic acid enclosed in a capsid okay so why do they have nucleocapsid uh the this uh, nucleocapsid actually protect the viral genome from nucleases so nucleocapsid proteins this nucleocapsid protect the viral genome from nucleases uh, during uh, uh, and and which during infection attaches the virion to specific receptor exposed on the um, prospective host cell okay capsids are formed as a uh, single or double protein shells and they consist of one or um, uh, a few structural protein spaces protein used to build sing, uh, the capsid are called capsomeres okay so capsid the unit of capsid is actually capsomere capsomere is the unit of capsid okay there is and, and the nucleic acid together with capsid form the nucleocapsid and the, some viruses have envelope okay and those envelope viruses are called envelope viruses if the viruses does not possess any envelope then such viruses would be called as non enveloped viruses or naked viruses more appropriately okay in enveloped viruses, nucleocapsid will be surrounded by a lipid bilayer, and this lipid bilayer is structurally similar to the host lipid membrane. Okay, this lipid bilayer will consist of spike proteins, and spike proteins are also known as papillomers. Okay, these are also known as papillomers. Fine. In viruses that acquire the envelope by budding through the plasma membrane or another intracellular cell membrane, the lipid composition of viral envelope will reflect the particular host membrane. This is the viral genome. Viral genome is of smaller size and last largest genome is of bacteriophage G. So remember, bacteriophage G, bacteriophage G has largest genome. Bacteriophage G has largest genome, right? okay and it is about like a 670 kilo base pairs okay uh, kilo basis the genome of a virus will consist of dna or either rna it may be single stranded or double stranded the genomic rna strand of single stranded rna virus is called sense or positive or plus sense in orientation if it can uh, serve as mrna in anti sense or negative sense minus sense if a complementary strand synthesized by viral rna transcriptase serve as mrna okay see if this is this is the rna if this rna is serving as mrna then this is the sense strand 
but if dna is synthesizing some rna okay so uh, it is a complementary strand synthesized by viral rna transcriptase serve as mrna again telling you antisense a strand rna strand is known as antisense negative sense minus sense if a complementary strand synthesized by viral rna transcriptase serve as mrna okay so rna genome of certain viruses may be segmented in nature segmented genome like segments will be there segmented genome are those which will be divided uh, into separate molecule of nucleic acid and all of which are then packaged into the single viral particle okay segmented genome is different from the multipartite genome you have you heard about multipartite genome as well multipartite genome okay have you heard about multipartite genome what is a multipartite genome uh, this uh, is also actually a segmented but each genome segment is packaged into a separate virus pa particle okay multipartite uh, partite genomes are also segmented but each genome segment is packaged into separate virus particles and these particles are structurally similar and may, may contain the same component protein but often differ in size depending on the length of the genome segment package multipartite viruses these are found in plants mainly okay plants mainly consist of multipartite genome types of uh, viral nucleic acid uh, you will be uh, you already know that there will be single stranded dna single stranded rna as well okay then let's talk about uh, shape of uh, and symmetry uh, so, so this is the symmetry so all viruses have nuclear capsid we know that and the term symmetry when we are talking about the term symmetry what is the meaning of symmetry is the way in which the capsomeres are arranged so we can say arrangement of capsomeres arrangement of capsomeres into capsid in the virus this is what symmetry tells us okay arrangement of capsomeres in the virus capsule okay now they may be icosahedral uh, or they may be helical or complex so what is helical helical is like pmv icosahedral complex okay you have seen bacteriophages bacteriophage will have icosahedral symmetry and there are other bacteriophages which will which will have complex symmetry helical symmetry is seen in nucleocapsid of many filamentous and few morphic viruses they consist of a helical array of capsomeres these capsomeres are wrapped around the nucleic acid this is the nucleic acid okay and the capsomere are wrapped around this nucleic acid tmp is an example in icosahedral morphology there will be nucleoside uh, of uh, they are the these are the nucleosides which are arranged in a polyhedron having triangular faces equal equilateral triangular faces okay okay these are equilateral triangular faces and uh, there are uh, about 12 vertices complex structure uh, will have uh, either like like they are nicely purely uh, icosahedral or nor helical okay t4 complex example is t4 virus of e coli t4 virus of e coli is an example of complex structure okay now let's talk about classification okay this is the classification of virus fine classification of a virus how viruses are classified this is the classification of virus how these viruses are classified so let me tell you that they can be classified on the basis of their host their structure their composition how are they reproducing what is the nature of their disease cause currently viruses are uh, classified with a taxonomic system of uh, placing primary emphasis on the host type and strandedness capsid symmetry envelope and host range so these are like peak uh, picor uh, like picor naviridae orthomyxoviridae par uh, par uh, parvoviridae adenoviridae and poxviridae so genome size is uh, smallest in picor naviridae and it then increases in orthomyxoviridae and no actually uh, smallest one is in parvoviridae adenoviridae have 28 to 25 kilobases and poxviridae has largest 
kilo basis. Nucleic acid in pico, uh, picor nevada is RNA, they are single stranded, they are icosahedral, and uh, envelope is not there in uh, the host range. They, they attack on animals mainly. Orthomix of uh, they also have RNA, also single stranded, but they are helical and they also have envelope and also attack on animals. Then come uh, paro viridae, they uh, nucleic cases, they have DNA, it is single stranded, but they have a uh, icosahedral capsule symmetry, they do not have any envelope and they also attack on animals. And then come alino viridae, uh, DNA, but double stranded, icosahedral, no envelope and uh, attack on animal. Fox viridae, they have DNA, double helix, but they have complex uh, capsule symmetry and they, have, they are enveloped and attack on animals. So you should remember which one have DNA, which one have RNA and DNA or RNA are either double stranded or single stranded, either they are having the envelope or not and which type of symmetry are they possessing, okay. Other than this, there is Baltimore and system of uh, virus classification, they uh, classify uh, the system on the basis of genome type and the, the, the mechanism uh, genome used to synthesize mRNA and uh, replicate their genomes, see. Group 1 include double stranded DNA genomes and this double stranded DNA will be synthesized from double stranded DNA. And then group 2 will include single stranded DNA genomes and uh, uh, first of all double stranded uh, DNA will be uh, replicated from uh, will be formed from single stranded DNA which again will be converted into single strand DNA. Then come group 3 in which double stranded RNA genome will be there and double stranded RNA will form a single stranded RNA which then will be converted into double stranded RNA. Group 4 will include single stranded RNA genome of plus sense and now you know what is plus sense. These themselves act as mRNA. Okay. So their application will be plus RNA. Then negative RNA will be formed as which won't be acting as a mRNA. Then again MR, uh, plus RNA will be formed. Single stranded RNA genome of minus sense replication. Uh, here minus RNA strand it means which is not acting as a mRNA. Then from this mRNA RNA will be formed plus sense RNA will be formed and again minus sense RNA will be formed. Group 6 involves single stranded RNA genome that replicate with DNA intermediate like single stranded RNA will result in a formation of double stranded DNA and again single stranded RNA will be formed. Then uh, comes group 7 in which double stranded DNA genome that replicate with RNA intermediate. So there will be now double stranded DNA which will first form RNA and again negative sense DNA will be formed. Now let's talk about bacteriophage. Bacteriophage uh, were uh, uh, discovered by two scientists like uh, or wait, Tward and uh, D. Herley. Okay, independently, both of them uh, discovered uh, bacteriophage. But the term bacteriophage was coined by D. Herley. Okay, I, uh, okay. So exactly what are bacteriophages? They are, these are the eaters of bacteria. So these are the viruses that attack bacteria, right? These are the eaters of bacteria. Their morphology may vary. They will have like uh, polyhedral filamentous or complex structure or complex phages will have polyhedral head to which states and sometimes other appendages are attached. Now let's check it out here. So this, uh, if you're talking about phage T4, okay? We are talking about phage T4, okay? So, the it is an example of complex phase which will have linear double-stranded DNA molecule. This nucleic acid is double-stranded DNA molecule, okay? It which is enclosed in a capsid and uh, attached to tail, okay? The T4 capsid is elongated and icosahedron. It has a very elaborate tail structure, uh, including a collar... Uh, at uh, base of the head and a rigid tail surrounding by contractile sheath and the sheath is attached to the basal plates okay they are whiskers and long tail fibers as well okay uh, if i'm talking about bacteriophages they will have either double stranded dna or single stranded dna most of the bacteriophages will have uh, dna as the nucleic acid if i'm talking of 5174 it will have single stranded dna if i'm talking about ms2 then it will have single stranded RNA plus sense. Okay. Uh, if I'm talking about 5, 6, it will have double stranded RNA. Okay. If I'm, I'm talking about P phages, okay, it will have double stranded DNA. Okay. Most of phages have double stranded DNA virus. Fine. But I have told you about different uh, phages here. Now, let me tell you about the life cycle of bacteriophages. All phages will be having a specific set of reactions. 
in order to make more of themselves. First phase must be able to recognize a bacterium. Okay, uh, they are, then it multiply uh, in the bacterium by binding to it, and then it form its own proteins, and uh, then it uh, causes the lysis of the back bacterial genome. Okay, there are two different types of viral cycles. One is lytic, and other one is a lysogenic cycle. Okay, so two different types of cycles are there. First of all, I will tell you about lytic cycle. Lytic cycle is also known as, the cycle is also known as a vegetative cycle, okay. Vegetative life cycle, okay. Fine. So, what happens? It is actually a uh, bacterial virus exhibiting uh, the lytic cycle. is also known as vi uh, virulent bacteriophage, okay. This uh, lytic cycle will uh, uh, include a virulent bacteriophage, okay? fine. Virulent bacteriophage. Okay. So because they will uh, they will cause death and destruction of the host cell. For example, T even phages. Okay. The lytic cycle will consist of five main steps: the attachment, penetration, synthesis of nucleic acid and proteins, assembly and packaging, and then release. So cycle begins by attachment of bacteriophage to the cell host. And uh, they, it will be attached to the receptors on the bacterial cell wall. And after virus attached to its host, it will cause uh, the penetration of genetic material. Once the bacteriophage genome enters the cytoplasm, it will uh, subvert the host of nucleic acid and uh, protein synthesis apparatus. So, uh, so there will be initiation of synthesis of viral proteins and DNA now. And uh, as the virus proteins are synthesized, they will assemble themselves into viral component like head, tail, etc. And after assembly step is completed, viral proteins cause the lysis of the host cells. Okay, and the released, uh, they are released into the environment. The average, the average page particle produced by each infected cell is the worst size okay it is a characteristic of each virus and it, it often ranges between uh, like uh, 15 and uh, several hundreds okay uh, okay so in uh, in this lytic cycle we actually go through two phages okay there will be a uh, one step growth one step growth curve will be seen okay one step growth curve uh, which will have eclipse period and a uh, latent period okay First one is the eclipse period. What exactly is eclipse period? Actually, in eclipse period, it is the time when no virion can be detected inside the cell, inside the intracellular space. And at the end of eclipse, uh, there is the period where mature phages begin to accumulate in the cell and they are released by the cell by lysis. Okay. So the time from infection until lysis means lysis. Uh, has not been uh, uh, has not started yet so time between the lysis uh, infection and lysis is called latent period and this is the time during which no extracellular virion can be detected while intracellular can be detected now let's talk about lysogenic life cycle in lysogenic life cycle bacterial linear chromosome will be inserted in the dna there will be circularization of the phase dna and ultimately there is integration of this d uh, uh, bacterial dna into the host okay and this is now known as prophage when uh, bacteriophage dna is inserted into the host genome it is known as prophase and the cell is known, now known as lysogenized cell okay it is actually known as lysogen now fine when a cell become lysogenized it carry it now carry extra gene uh, which is expressed by phage in the cell and these genes can change the properties of bacterial cell and the process will be known as phase conversion. Phase conversion. Okay. What is phase conversion? Phase conversion or lysogenic. Okay. Phase conversion when uh, there will be effect of uh, phase gene on the host cell. Okay. Physical state of prophase is not identical for all the tampering viruses. For example, the prophase of bacterial, uh, bacteriophage lambda and E. coli is integrated into the bacterial chromosome at a specific site and uh, the replicate as a part of bacterial. Uh, Chromosome, whereas a uh, prophase or bacteriophase P1 in e, e. coli replicate as an extra chromosomal plasma. So it's not important like that this bacteriophage uh, uh, will be inserted, uh, this DNA will be inserted into this. It can circulate like in this form, then, uh, then uh, this is now acting as extra chromosomal segment. Okay. The lysogenic bacteriophage like lambda T4 
uses their tail to inject viral DNA into the host. When, once the viral DNA is inside the host, it can either undergo a lytic cycle similar to that of T4 or incorporate itself into the host cell. Okay, the integration of uh, uh, this, let me show you, uh, occur on the attachment sites. Okay, uh, so in the genome, both, uh, uh, in the genome of both bacteriophage and bacterium, there are sites like, this is bacterial genome, it have B domain, O domain and B dash domain. And this is bacteriophage, this is phase domain, it have P domain, O domain and P dash domain. So O, o domain is, O sequence is similar to both of these and it will act as a site of attachment and this O sequence is known as core sequence. Okay, okay now. So a lysogeny, uh, if uh, there is a, in lysogenic life cycle, lysogeny is actually maintained by CI repression, okay. CI depressure maintains lysogeny, okay. It is encoded by CI genes of lambda prophage, okay. This uh, CI repressure will be encoded by CI genes of lambda prophage and CI repressure then block the expression of gene. CI repressure blocks the repressure of uh, genes responsible for uh, lytic cycle. Okay. Understand how lysogeny will be maintained responsible for lytic cycle. So, Phase will undergo lysis or it will be repressed by CI repression. Okay. So, uh, if this, uh, this prophase, okay, if the process, uh, see what will happen now. If the prophase initiates synthesis of phage protein, then that will lead to the destruction of uh, infected cell and new phases will be released. It means lytic cycle will be started. So, this process is now known as induction. Induction occurs when, when your phase will prophage, like prophage, new uh, prophage will start synthesis of phase proteins. So, induction can be UV induction or there can be zygotic induction. It can be UV induction or zygotic induction as well. And how the zygotic induction or UV induction will occur? Means lysogeny, CI repressor won't be able to function anymore and there will be lytic uh, cycle now, okay. So, what happened uh, uh, in a lysogeny? Like it can be induced by UV radiation and this is known as UV induction and DNA damage will also be caused by RAC protein. Which protein? Recombination A protein which uh, act as co-proteases and they can stimulate CI repressor degradation. They stimulate CI repressure degradation, okay. So, there would not be repression anymore, degradation, right, okay. If a cell having HFR, high frequency recombination, is mated with HF negative, okay, then it's like infecting a non-lysogen with lambda, okay. This is lysogenic for lambda, fine. In the process of mating, when lambda prophase will enter non-lysogenic recipient, which does not contain any lambda repressure, transcription of prophase will begin and thus a non-lysogenic recipient receiving the prophase will lyse. And this phenomenon will now be known as zygotic induction. I hope everything is clear to you now and this is all for today. In the next lecture, I will be telling you our plague uh, essay, but uh, if you are... Uh, uh, preparing for CSIR net then here is the detail of paid classes on your screen you can use the referral code Neha and uh, for uh, by using this you will get 10% off go on an academy follow Neha Tarija ma'am along with this do not forget to subscribe to our channel press the bell icon and just check out the description to get the links to our different platforms that's all for today